there welcome back to my channel my name is Shelby and today I'm going to be doing a reading wrap-up for the contemporary thon that went on this past week as well as a couple of books that I read the weekend prior to the readathon um, I read a total of nine books seven for the readathon and then two prior um, I will link them all down below to their Goodreads as well as mine I did write reviews for all of them so let's just get right into it the first book that I read over last weekend was Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent. This is my first book by her and it is a kind of psychological thriller. I gave it three out, three and a half out of five stars. I thought it was pretty good. It was about Andrew and Lydia, this married couple, who they murder a younger girl, maybe about 20 years old, and they bury her in their garden. And so you're wondering why did they murder this girl and will they get away with it? Um, and then their teenage son learns that they did that and that they're lying to the police. And he does form some kind of relationship with the sister of the victim a couple of years later. And so it's really interesting. The author's writing is pretty interesting. I think that's why I gave it lower rating. Um, but it, the story was enjoyable. The characters got worse the longer the story went on. And so um, they just were really bad characters, really bad people. But that didn't stop me from enjoying the book. So again, I gave this three and a half out of five stars. And then after that, I read The Forbidden by Jodi Ellen Malpass. This is the first book I've read by her as well. And this is a new adult romance, really, really steamy. It is about a girl named Annie and she meets a guy named Jack in a bar one night and they have a one night stand. And then she leaves in the morning, doesn't get his information and just wants to move on. And then she's having a housewarming party for her new apartment and he shows up at her door and he's now thrust back into her life and their romance continues and it has lots of steamy scenes in it. Turns out that they are working on a project together. She's an architect and he's an, a contractor. So they are just entangled in each other's life and it's really, really good. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I cannot wait to read more of her books. And then for the readathon, my first one I read was Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This satisfied the um, challenge of a dark or spooky read so it is pretty dark it's about a girl named Camille she is a writer for a newspaper or a magazine and she gets tasked with a story to go back to her hometown where there's a series of murders of little girls happening and they seem to be related so she needs to write a story on it and while she's learning about for the story she's kind of investigating what's happening and at the same time she has to stay back home you know instead of a hotel she stays with her mom and they have a really tumultuous relationship um, so you learn about that as well and they kind of intertwine the story of that as well as the story of the murders. So this is really good. I did give it 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't like it as much as Gone Girl but I liked it more than I think it's called Dark Places. And then for the challenge of reading a new author, I read I Heart New York by Lindsay Kelk. So I have this on my shelf for a really long time and I'm really mad at myself for not reading it sooner. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. It's absolutely amazing. It was about a girl named Angela who is from London. She catches her boyfriend cheating on her, fiance actually cheating on her at her best friend's wedding. And she finds out that not only does he, is he cheating on her, but her best friend and the groom know about it. So she kind of ruins the wedding and she hops on a plane and goes to New York like spur of the moment. Um, at her hotel she runs into a concierge named Jenny who's about her same age and she spills her whole guts to her. They form a friendship and Jenny shows Angela around New York and gets her like all glamified and to start dating again. And so she does start dating two guys. One is a rock star, he's like a lead singer of a band and one is a really wealthy like Wall Street. Um, banker and so she also gets a job as a writer for a column and she writes about her dating um, these two guys so it's a really cute book and it is the first in the series so I'm definitely going to pick up the other ones and then after that for a cover that has orange on it I read Everywhere and Every Way by Jennifer Probst it's the first book in the Billionaire Builders series and this one follows Cal um, I think the oldest of three brothers so there's three books in the series and I'm guessing one for each brother so he runs a business called the Pierce Brothers it's a construction business and he runs it with his dad his dad passes away he assumes he's going to get the business but at the will reading he learns that he has to run the business with his three brothers and they have to live under one roof and that's a condition the dad left so they have to work together and then this girl named Morgan 
gets them this job um, for these celebrities. She's their interior designer and it pays enough that would give them enough profit for that year basically. And so him and Morgan, they hate each other, um, but they have this like romance with each other. So it's about their romance. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. The romance was a little off for me, but I do have the other two books, so I will read them. I gave this three and a half stars. It was enjoyable, but um, definitely not a favorite. And then the next book I read is a YA, and this was for a diverse read um, because it is about someone who is uh, has has an amputee leg, and it's called The Running Dream by Wendelin Van Drennen. And sorry, I don't know if I said that right, but like I said, it's a YA book and it is about a girl named Jessica and in an accident, she loses one of her legs um, below the knee and she's a runner. So it breaks her heart. if She feels like she will not achieve any of her dreams anymore. And then um, she meets a girl in one of her classes who is disabled named Rosa and she has cerebral palsy and they form a friendship, it's someone she never would have noticed before having to be in a wheelchair. Um, and then she learns that she can get a prosthetic and that even she could run with a um, prosthetic for specifically for running. So it's about her and her dream to run again and her friendship with Rosa. And this was absolutely amazing, so, so touching. Um, and I gave it five out of five stars. And then after that, I read for my non-traditional format. I read an arc of Lisa Gardner's Look For Me. This is the ninth book in the D. D. Detective Dee Dee Warren series and this follows um, a murder of a family, uh, the Bayes family. There was three kids and two adults and th two out of the three kids and both adults were murdered but the teenage daughter who's like 16 is missing along with the two family dogs and so the detective Dee Dee Warren trying to figure out where she is and if she was the one who did it or if um, she is running away from the murder. And then someone from the previous book Look For Me by Lisa Gardner number eight in the series. Um, her name is Flora. She was a victim in that but ran in with Dee Dee. She's also looking for um, the girl who is missing and you're wondering why she's looking for her and they kind of have it all in something in common and um, is a really really good story. I love um, crime mystery books and I really love Lisa Gardner. I gave this five out of star five out of five stars really really good. And then the second to last book I read was Confessed by Colleen Hoover. Um, this is one of the only books I have left of hers that I haven't read. And this was my five star prediction. Unfortunately, I only gave it four stars, but it still was a really, really good book. It just didn't touch me as much as her others. And this was about two main characters, Auburn and Owen. So Auburn, her um, boyfriend passes away when she's a teenager and you know she's pretty torn up about it. And she moves back to Dallas, the city that he was from. And she's starting a new job and she needs some extra income for something that we don't know about. And she responds to a help wanted and it's for this art gallery for this guy named Owen. He's an artist and he needs someone to um, ring up all the pa paintings that he does. And his paintings are really cool because he has like a box where people could put confessions and then he uses those um, to make his artwork and then he sells them. And then they have a romance together. Um, but Owen has a really dark past. He knows her from somewhere else and you know, he can't really tell her, but he, if he confesses, it might ruin the relationship, but he just needs to be honest. And so this is a really good story. But like I said, um, I can't say too much without giving it away. Uh, it was four out of five stars. And then the very last book I finished today, and this was for having my initials in the title or in the cover. And it's by Kristen Higgins on Second Thought. And this is my second Kristen Higgins book. I read the first one of mine a couple of weeks ago and I loved it. So I picked this one up and I equally loved this one. It was five out of five stars. It is a, another sister story. So the other one is about two sisters and so is this. It's about um, sisters uh, Kate and Ainsley. So Kate, she had given up on finding true love and her happily ever after. She's 39 years old and then does she meet someone um, named Nathan. They get married after like five months and within three months of them being married, he dies just suddenly. And so it's like kind of terrible fate that she meets the love of her life and then he dies. Um, so she's kind of left wondering like, what does she do? And meanwhile, her sister Ainsley, she is with her boyfriend Eric for about 10 or 11 years. He recently got over cancer and so she's finally like, okay, now we're gonna get engaged. I've been waiting for years. And she finds a ring even and so she's waiting and waiting and then all of a sudden, 
he dumps her um and she's left this like shocked because she's been with him for so many years so it's kind of about how the two sisters have to lean on each other and move on from these men in their lives um kate learns that nathan had been keeping something from her and ainsley learns that eric was not as great as she always thought and they both meet new men and so you see some romances with them both as well as them finding themselves and having a great relationship together again this was absolutely amazing five out of five stars and i can't wait to read the rest of her books so those were all of the books that i've read since last weekend a total of nine and i will see you guys all soon and thank you so much for watching bye